All right. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to our February the 28th reading. And uh, today we are looking at some of the duties of the various clans. OK, so um, the duties of the Kohathite clan and we're in Numbers chapter four. All right. It says, then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, record the names of the members of the clans and families of the Kohathite division of the tribe of Levi. List all the men between the ages of 30 and 50 who are eligible to serve in the tabernacle. The duties of the Kohathites at the tabernacle will relate to the most sacred objects. When the camp moves, Aaron and his sons must enter the tabernacle first to take down the inner curtain and cover the Ark of the Covenant with it. Then they must cover the inner curtain with fine goatskin leather and spread over that a single piece of blue cloth. Finally, they must put the carrying poles of the Ark in place. Next, they must spread a blue cloth over the table where the bread of the presence is displayed and on the cloth, they will place the bowls, pans, jars, pitchers, and the special bread. They must spread a scarlet cloth over all of this. And finally, a covering of fine goatskin leather on top of the scarlet cloth. Then they must insert the carrying poles into the table. Next, they must cover the lampstand with a blue cloth along with its lamps lamp snuffers, trays, and special jars of olive oil. Then they must cover the lampstand and its accessories with fine goatskin leather and place the bundle on a carrying frame. Next, they must spread a blue cloth over the gold incense altar and cover this cloth with fine goatskin leather. Then they must attach the carrying poles to the altar. They must take all a they must take all the remaining furnishings of the sanctuary and wrap them in a blue cloth, cover them with fine goatskin leather, and place them on the carrying frame. They must remove the ashes from the altar for sacrifices and cover the altar with a purple cloth. All the altar utensils, fire, the fire pans, meat forks, shovels, basins, and all the containers must be placed on the cloth and a covering of fine goatskin leather must be spread over them. Finally, they must put the carrying poles in place. The camp will be ready to move when Aaron and his sons have finished covering the sanctuary and all the sacred articles. The Kohathites will, will come and carry these things to the next destination, but they must not touch the sacred objects or they will die. So these are the things from the tabernacle that the Kohathites must carry. Now, Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, will be responsible for the oil of the lampstand, the fragrant incense, the daily grain offering, and the anointing oil. In fact, Eleazar will be, held, will be responsible for the entire tabernacle and everything in it, including the sanctuary and its furnishings. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Do not let the Kohathite clans be destroyed from among the Levites. This is what you must do so they will live and not die when they approach the most sacred objects. Aaron and his sons must always go in with them and assign a specific duty or load to each person. The Kohathites must never enter the sanctuary to look at the sacred objects for even a moment or they will die. Duties of the Gershonite clan, Numbers 4.21. And the Lord said to Moses, record the names of the members of the clans and families of the Gershonite division of the tribe of Levi. List all the men between the ages of 30 and 50 who are eligible to serve in the tabernacle. These Gershonite clans will be responsible for general service and carrying loads. They must carry the curtains of the tabernacle, the tabernacle itself with its coverings, the outer covering of fine goatskin leather and the curtain for the tabernacle entrance. They are also to carry the curtains for the courtyard walls that surround the tabernacle and altar, the curtain across the courtyard entrance, the ropes, and all the equipment related to their use. The Gershonites are responsible for all these items. Aaron and his sons will direct the Gershonites regarding all their duties, whether it involves moving the equipment or doing other work. They must assign the Gershonites responsibility for the loads they are to get, carry. So these are the duties assigned to the Gershonite clans at the tabernacle. They will be directly responsible to Ithamar, the son of Aaron the priest. Duties of the Merorite clan. Now record the names of the members of the clans and families of the Merorite division 
of the tribe of Levi, list all the men between the ages of 30 and 50 who are eligible to serve in the tabernacle. Their only duty at the tabernacle will be to carry loads. They will carry the frames of the tabernacle, the crossbars, the posts, and the bases. Also, the posts for the courtyard walls will be with their bases, pegs, and ropes, and all the accessories and everything else related to their use. Assign the various loads to each man by name. So these are the duties of the Merorite clans at the tabernacle. They are directly responsible to Ithamar, the son of Aaron, the priest. The census of the Levites. So Moses, Aaron, and the other leaders of the community listed the members of the Kohathite division by their clans and families. The list included all the men between 30 and 50 years of age who were re who were eligible for service in the tabernacle, and the total number came to 2,750. So this was the total of all those from the Kohathite clans who were eligible to serve at the tabernacle. Moses and Aaron listed them just as the Lord had commanded through Moses. The Gershonite division was also listed by its clans and families. The list included all the men between 30 and 50 years of age who were eligible for service in the tabernacle and the total number came to 22,630. So this was the total of all those from the Gershonite clans who were eligible to serve at the tabernacle. Moses and Aaron listed them just as the Lord had commanded. The Merorite division was also listed by its clans and families. The list included all the men between 30 and 50 years of age who were eligible for service in the tabernacle, and the total number came to 3,200. So this was the total of all those from the Merorite clans who were eligible for service. Moses and Aaron listed them just as the Lord had commanded through Moses. So Moses, Aaron, and the leaders of Israel listed all the Levites by their clans and families, all the men between 30 and 50 years of age who were eligible for service in the tabernacle and for its transportation numbered 8,580. When, the name, when their names were recorded, as the Lord had commanded through Moses, each man was assigned his task and told what to carry. And so the registration was completed, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Numbers 5, Purity in Israel's Camp. The Lord gave these instructions to Moses, command the people of Israel to remove from the camp anyone who has a skin disease or a discharge or who has become ceremonially unclean by touching a dead person. This command has become this command applies to men and women alike. Remove them so they will not defile the camp in which I live among them. So the Israelites did as the Lord had commanded Moses and removed such people from the camp. Then the Lord said to Moses, give the following instructions to the people of Israel. If any of the people, men or women, betray the Lord by doing wrong to another person, they are guilty. They must confess their sin and make full restitution for what they have done adding another 20% and returning it to the person who was wronged. But if the person who was wronged is dead and there are no near, near relatives to whom restitution can be made, the payment belongs to the Lord and must be given to the priest. Those who are guilty must also give bring a ram as a sacrifice and they will be purified and made right with the Lord. All the sacred offerings that the Israelites bring to a priest will belong to him. Each priest may keep all the sacred donations that he receives, protecting marital faithfulness. And the Lord said to Moses, give the following instructions to the people of Israel. Suppose a man's wife goes astray and she is unfaithful to her husband and has sex with another man, but neither her husband nor anyone else knows about it. She has defiled herself, even though there was no witness and she was not caught in the act. If her husband becomes jealous and is suspicious of his wife and needs to know whether or not she has defiled herself, the husband must bring his wife to the priest. He must also bring an offering of two quarts of barley flour to be presented on her behalf. Do not mix it with olive oil or frankincense, for it is a jealousy offering, an offering to prove whether or not she is guilty. The priest will then present her to stand trial before the Lord. He must take some holy water in a clay jar and pour into it dust he has taken from the tabernacle floor. When the priest has presented the woman before the Lord, he must unbind her hair and place in her hands the offering of proof, the jealousy offering, to determine whether her husband's suspicions are justified. The priest will stand before her, holding the jar 
of bitter water that brings a curse to those who are guilty. The priest will then put the woman under oath and say to her, if no other man has had sex with you, and you have not gone astray and defiled yourself while, while under your husband's authority, may you be immune from the effects of this bitter water that brings on the curse. But if you have gone astray by being unfaithful to your husband and have defiled yourself by having sex with another man, and at this point the priest must put the woman under oath by saying, May the people know that the Lord's curse is upon you when he makes you infertile, causing your womb to shrivel and your abdomen to swell. Now may this water that brings the curse enter your body and cause your abdomen to swell and your womb to shrivel. And the woman will be required to say, Yes, let it be so. And the priest will write these curses on a piece of leather and wash them off into the bitter water. He will make the woman drink the bitter water that brings on the curse. When the water enters her body, it will cause bitter suffering if she is guilty. The priest will take the jealousy offering from the woman's hand, lift it up before the Lord, and carry it to the altar. He will take a handful of the flour as a token portion and burn it on the altar, and he will require the woman to bring the water. If she has defiled herself by being unfaithful to her husband, the water that brings on the curse will cause bitter suffering. Her abdomen will swell and her womb will shrink and her name will become a curse among her people. But if she has not defiled herself and is pure, then she will be unharmed and will still be able to have children. This is the ritual law for dealing with suspicion. If a woman goes astray and defiles herself while under her husband's authority, or if a man becomes jealous and is suspicious that his wife has been unfaithful, the husband must present his wife before the Lord and the priest will apply this entire ritual law to her. The husband will be innocent of any guilt in this matter, but his wife will be held accountable for her sin. All right. Okay. Well, it, you know, and, and in some ways, if you think about it, it really does, again, jive with uh, with what the New Testament scripture says, that we we reap re what we sow and that, you know, be sure our sins will find us out. You know, if we are harboring sin in our life, uh, God almost always finds a way for, uh, you know, for that to, to come out. You know, and if, if God doesn't bring it out, I guarantee you the devil will bring it out. Because the devil, he not only wants to cause you to sin, or you or me, he not only wants to you know, entice us into sin, guess what he makes sure to do once he gets us enticed to actually sin? He makes sure that we get found out because his goal is, is to destroy us. And so he will do everything he can to get us to, to, to fall into sin, to, to give in to temptation. And the moment we give in to temptation, he will make sure to broadcast it to the entire world. No matter what it is, he will he will work to make sure that we are found out. Why? Because he wants to destroy us, wants to destroy other people, wants to destroy our families, wants to destroy. And, and so that's what the destroyer does. Um, and so, again, a great reminder to make sure that we are uh, we are going to God and asking him for strength. And we are trusting him to help us to overcome temptation, to find that way out, because no temptation has seized you except that which is common to man, uh, but God is faithful. He will, he, he will uh, provide you a way out and for you to be able to stand up underneath, under that temptation and to find a way out. So we've got a God who is able and willing to help us in our times of temptation and trouble. All right, let's pray together. Thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you for that promise. I pray, Lord, for each person, God, that they will see and know, Lord, that it is your desire to lead us out of temptation, to deliver us from evil, and, Lord, to uh, to lead us in the path of righteousness. So help us, Lord, to put our trust in you fully. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, God bless you. And uh, it was great to be able to spend some more time with you in reading the word. And we will be back. Uh, tomorrow, which is March the 1st, starting up a brand new month, and uh, we'll be picking up with Numbers chapter 6. All right, well, hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you tomorrow.